In 2015, I spent a lot of time in Acadia National Park. I spent hundreds of hours in that park over the course of 322 days alone and doing, well, pretty much nothing. I was working on a time-lapse film of Acadia spanning seasons, shifts in light and heights, tides, weather, scarcity, and abundance. The film started as my senior exhibition project at Mount Desert Island High School, but became a way of celebrating Acadia in its 99th year in preparation for the centennial. In the end, I compressed all those hours down into just five minutes for the final film, capturing all four seasons in more than 35,000 individual still images, or about one picture every 13 minutes, contained in more than 500 gigabytes of data. What I thought would be a fun project in the park quickly turned into so much more. One thing I learned pretty early on is that time-lapse takes a long time. <laughs> it's, it's not that it just takes a lot of time, it's that it takes a lot of time being present, on the ground, immersed in the subject of your lens. When you take a normal photo, you only get a snapshot of the place you're experiencing. But with time-lapse, you go to a location frantically set up for just one shot, and then wait for as long as 10 hours for it to finish. You know, TED Talks are so short because we're only good at listening for a short amount of time. And even that is sometimes hard. If listening for a handful of minutes is hard, imagine me out in the park waiting and listening to just the wind and the waves for hours on end. Unexpectedly, in those many hours, I found that the waiting turned quickly to watching and then slowly to observing the landscape, noticing details I'd never seen before even in places I'd been to a thousand times. Time-lapse takes time, a lot of time. Eventually, it made me feel like I was actually taking part in the processes going on around me. It gave me the opportunity to witness, to be immersed in, and to take part in nature, just doing its thing. A snapshot can't quite capture that kind of experience. The very first shot I did for the project I got up at 4.30 in the morning and hauled all my gear up to a ledge near the precipice trail in the dark for a sunrise shot. As my camera clicked away, the sky gradually transitioned from a starry darkness to sunrise, and I simply sat there watching the sun come up and cast the most glorious orange glow I had ever seen across the cliff face above me. It took my breath away and was such a powerful experience that I ended up writing my college essay about it. Adventures like that first morning gave me time to watch the ebb and flow of the world around me. In a sense, time-lapse became a metaphor, an expression of how I want to live life. It captured a mental and physical state that comes when you slow down and zoom in on the details. When you're out there, reflection is inevitable. In Acadia, I saw many sunrises, sunsets, and perfectly starry nights. Even if I didn't want to pay attention or care, I had to, and I did, simply because I was there with hours in front of me and nothing to do but wait. As kids, we're amazed by so many things, but as adults, and not that I'm a real adult, <laughs> it, it seems like we often try to suppress that amazement. Maybe we even feel embarrassed by showing it. But during those times in the park, I was completely blown away with wonder, and it felt perfectly natural. So what's the difference? What is it that doesn't translate from my time in Acadia to the rest of my life? Maybe the difference is time. Maybe, just maybe, time-lapse doesn't take time, but gives time. It's everything else that takes our time. I found awe in Acadia, and it felt completely healthy and natural because there was nothing else I needed to do but sit and watch things unfold. Even if we've watched a thousand sunrises and sunsets before, they're still just as beautiful and sublime as they've always been. And they deserve our awe because the world is incredible. And it's not just sunrises and sunsets that are beautiful, it's plants, birds, rocks, the ocean, clouds, there's awesome stuff all around us. 
So maybe time leads to awe, but what does it really matter? I mean, really matter. Awe is the first step to falling in love with the planet and caring for it. That caring is exactly what we need to have the motivation to unpack the environmental issues impacting our planet. The issues we're facing are pretty damn heavy, and humans are at the root of most of the problems. But we're also at the root of the solutions. The intangibles, awe, and reflection probably aren't going to suffice on their own. But it's just human nature to find it hard to genuinely care about something that we don't have a relationship with. And choosing paper over plastic bags at the grocery store is hardly going to initiate a deep bond with the planet. My love for the Earth began right here in Acadia when I was a little boy. And time lapse fundamentally changed the way that I love it. I love the environment not because I know it's running out or because I feel guilty about the unseen consequences of my own consumption. I love the environment because I spent hours and hours in Acadia because I spent enough time to experience awe. We don't all have a camera or a huge project to complete, but we do all have 24 hours in our days and seven days in our weeks. Spend some time outside. Don't bring your phone or any expectations. Just watch. Go outside. Take time to feel the awe. Love your planet. Then save it. Thank you.